Hello and welcome to this uh, design practice 2 course module 1. Uh, quick introduction about me, I am Shantanu Bhattacharya, I am a professor at the mechanical engineering department at IIT Kanpur and I also coordinate the design activities. Uh, this course is actually a part 2 for the course which was done previous semester related to design practice 1, uh, where we had uh, learned about various concepts introductory to the design product design area. We had also talked about the Stanford model of uh, design thinking and uh, various stages of you know engineering product designs as well as introduction to this technique of concurrent engineering through which um, all the different wings of an organization can participate together to formulate a certain outcome, uh, a certain product. And so, there are very less um, scopes for um, a rework or re, uh, you know uh, redesigning the products because design is involved uh, as a in, in synergism with the various wings which are associated with realizing the product. Uh, we also talked extensively about uh, product embodiment design, robustness of design, uh, various techniques related to improving uh, quality assurance behind product designs and later on production. Um, uh, specifically, we talked about failure mode effect analysis. Uh, we also did a lot of study related to the house of quality, uh, how to trace the voice of the customer or the mind of the customer. We talked about axiomatic designing, we talked about uh, a, a fundamental introduction to group technology where it would align a designer, uh, particularly an engineering product designer to <coughs> have minimum possible um, variance in a particular uh, component or in a, in a particular component at the subsystem level. We briefly mentioned about forms and shapes. Uh, in fact, forms and shapes are very, very useful in representing any idea uh, which could be in terms of a sketch, uh, which could actually uh, be about how a product looks like, uh, what is the aesthetics behind uh, a product. We also introduced some fundamental concepts of electronics and then finally ended up with uh, lectures on material process, uh, material selection uh, for designers or even uh, things related to the ergonomics of work design, etc and uh, then had a brief introduction into biomechanics. This is uh, a part 2 module of the course which actually starts with uh, concurrent designing philosophy which is uh, involving how to use CAD tools. Okay. Uh, so, we will actually like to do uh, a lot of learning about how at the back end uh, data is processed. So, that uh, what you see in the front end as a particular CAD shape or a size is realized and with uh, in response to that we will study a lot of geometrical transformations which are important to uh, lay out in terms of coordinate geometry terms any particular shape and size that is in question. We will talk extensively about 3D shapes, about solid modeling. Uh, there is also some introduction to these very uh, sunrise area of uh, sensor systems which has just uh, recently emerged maybe about uh, a decade back which is also known as micro electromechanical systems. In context of that, we will learn little more about sensors and systems associated with sensors and then some of the actuators uh, which are at different length scales. Uh, we will also talk about rapid prototyping as a technique about 3D printing, uh, also associated rapid tooling, how we can develop processes related to the mold and uh, uh, how you can actually make a uh, repeatable accurate process uh, to realize a mold. Okay. Uh, we will also briefly delve into embedded uh, products or embedded designs, uh, particularly designing of embedded systems. We will uh, uh, go into a little bit of fundamentals in this course of uh, uh, you know elements related to the strength and stiffness of structural members, structural elements, particularly when they are assembled together as mechanisms and uh, linkages. So, uh, this will give you an idea of how you know you can integrate the mechanical part partly with the electronic part, so that you can make something which is an intelligent product. Okay. So, the last part of the course will be dedicated to uh, concepts of mechatronics, particularly introduction to control from the industrial perspective, uh, highlighting at several problems about how you know mechatronics can be successfully deployed in addressing things related to material handling. Uh, in addressing things related to automation within assembly lines uh, or even at different workstations, uh, which could be pertaining to any industry. 
So, and then finally, in intelligent product design, we will probably have some cases and do some studies about what these products would be like with the learning that we have. Uh, so, when we look at today's, so let us begin. So, when we look at today's scenario of um, the industrial ecosystem which is prevalent around the country, uh, there is a very fundamental question uh, that is raised, which is about what is competitiveness influenced by, okay, or uh, how can we uh, see the uh, the change in dimension with respect to the uh, in, in respect to the competition between the various stakeholders which uh, man this ecosystem? And <coughs> when we talk about such an expression, and if we go back into the history and see how uh, different parameters related to businesses have influenced the uh, the competitiveness uh, in the early 80s, uh, if we look at there was a huge um, emphasis or a huge uh, shift towards what you used to call uh, cost cutting or quality issues related to manufacturing of products. So, people were really not uh, used to customized designing and they were more adept to the mass production or uh, concepts of mass production, where uh, they could not envision many variants uh, to their tastes or liking, dislikings and they had to be able to use only a very, very skewed set of product lines. Things changed uh, quite rapidly and then starting from late 90s, there has been this continuous function which has come as an invariable, inseparable component uh, uh, of, of industry which is called product development okay, or product design activity. And it has changed the dimensions of competitiveness forever. If I typically looked at this particular slide here which talks about such a change uh, in the dimensions of competition, obviously uh, the side related to product development and product features or product functions have really started outweighing things related to manufacturing cost or quality. So, therefore, it is very, very important to realize in the current business scenario if you want to survive how to improve your uh, skills related to new product development, new product management, new service management systems which would give customers that one key element which is called customer delight. Okay. And so, therefore, um, this course and in fact, the earlier course is really uh, specially designed for learnings related to such activities where uh, you can uh, do a lot of in thinking, a lot of uh, customer mind mapping and trying to design things. And essentially, we are preparing you through these courses with the various tools which are there to understand about uh, uh, the customer psyche and to route that into different products. So, let us look at products and what are really these products. So, I could very uh, carefully define product to be a set of attributes offered to consumers and these attributes fulfill their needs or requirements which make them uh, high in demand uh, when we talk about marketing uh, such attributes within customers. So, essentially product is nothing but a vehicle uh, which help will which will help in providing the required benefit to its user as a package. And uh, obviously, the final goal that a product would have is in terms of customer satisfaction. So, a lot of customer psyche has to be captured within the product, so that this satisfaction can outrightly uh, come up. And uh, obviously, as one may recall that utility uh, that a product gives in terms of not only the functional uh, aspect of the product, but also the overall uh, aesthetics, shape, size uh, and also uh, the way that uh, the product creates a niche within the customer's psyche or the customer's mind is, is very, very important for uh, on the product. So, the benefits of uh, such consumer oriented uh, products and marketing of such products are that it definitely makes you go ahead in the business multiple folds because you are actually being able to satisfy the customer more. Uh, it is an organized way of how to satisfy, how to influence the customer more. And then obviously, you can achieve organizational uh, objective success, growth, benefits if you could uh, sell your products well. So, that is in a nutshell what I would like to say about uh, products. Let us look at some product lines um, and this is a very, very uh, famous uh, sort of slide borrowed from you know, the textbooks by Ulrich about product design. 
So, here uh, when we talk about a variety of such products uh, as you see there can be a, uh, a screwdriver, uh, this is a dust jet printer, this is a Boeing 737 airplane, uh, uh, Volkswagen Beetle and then roller blade skates. And if I looked at each of these products and if we think about what their functionality aspects are, the products kind of range from the simplest of the products which is a screwdriver. Um, to the most complex product which is an airplane, but the, the process of thinking that has gone into each of these products or the process of mapping that to the customer psyche which has gone into these products are exactly similar to each other. Uh, the only difference is in terms of the technology which has been assembled together to put together things in terms of the spans of times or length scales, the amount of investment that has been made to design these different products over uh, at, at different times, different time scales. So, uh, in, in a nutshell, although the processes of product designs are kind of similar to each other, uh, there is a lot of variant in terms of the length scales, uh, you know, the, sorry, the time scales across which development activities take place or the uh, different external stakeholders who are involved in the products versus the internal stakeholders, uh, the design and development times. Uh, the amount of cost that is involved in product designing or the amount of cost that is uh, involved in managing the whole life cycle behind uh, a certain product. So, if I looked at uh, some classifications uh, of all these different products, there can be uh, one kind of product which are actually tangible products okay? and these tangible products may include. Uh, some of the products that you saw in the earlier slide, for example, there could be a car or uh, let us say a bicycle or a pen uh, or any goods which are actually uh, things that you can feel and touch and use and see what their functionality is and they are more direct to uh, deliver their utility as a vehicle to the particular customer and so that is uh, what is called a tangible product. Uh, there can also be intangible products where either you, you cannot really touch and feel those products, but it does deliver satisfaction to your mind uh, which could be in terms of let us say services, services being offered at hotels, at airlines, you know services of a doctor uh, which are so important uh, and they can also be grouped as sort of products which are intangible and therefore, each of these whether it is a intangible or a tangible product calls for giving satisfaction in a way uh, that it is intended to, uh, to the particular customer was in mind. So, there is yet another kind of classification that products may have. So, there can be products which are purchased by individual users and products which can be deployed directly for personal or household uses or consumption. So, these kind of products are known as consumer products and then of course, there are products like for example, a gantry chain or a uh, let us say an industrial crane or an assembly line which uh, is related to uh, use within some industry which produces goods at a certain rate, industry which uh, which is purely for uh, any, any business purpose associated with that industrial unit and such products are known as industrial products. So, that is what in a nutshell uh, the various forms of product classifications can be uh, uh, put together as. Uh, there are many beautiful looking products for example, some of these apple products. Uh, which changed the, the way that people used to think. Uh, for example, this uh, small uh, laptop, okay, uh, a Mac uh, is in terms of its weight, in terms of its uh, carryability, in terms of its usage um, satisfies many needs which were not there earlier prior to introduction of this particular product or this uh, iPod uh, which talks about can you have your own customized music library outside a musical store okay, and carry it in your pocket. So, these kind of uh, wonderful ideas or thoughts have been put together and has it has been demonstrated by various companies that such kind of innovative simply better products do exist and it, it finds its way into the market, penetrates deep into the market and actually can be considered to be a disruptive technology from time to time. Uh, there are some other products which I can easily refer to which uh, talks about how you know use can be customer use can be mapped in, in terms of shapes and sizes. 
in terms of tangible uh, goods that can uh, create uh, value within uh, within markets this example of black and decker snake light it is a flexible neck and powerful uh, light uh, which is rechargeable okay the snake like orientation of the particular light uh, allows it to go into very small gaps particularly uh, useful in automobile repair when you are talking about hitting the engine room and doing some um, repair related to an underbody or an engine room problem uh, you do need illumination at nooks and corners where otherwise lamps cannot get into uh, it provides features like leds powerful uh, battery packs particularly lithium ion batteries which are very very long lasting creates ultra bright conditions for a longer time and uh, helps in positioning uh, rapidly within such nooks and crevices so this is again a, a sort of customer psyche mapped into what could have been otherwise an ordinary uh, bulb invented by thomas alva edison so that's what design makes to uh, the the basic fundamental need uh, which does exist it it makes it look much better and it uh, makes it much more usable and it it generates a lot of uh, satisfaction of the user who is involved in using so another uh, interesting example is this good grip angled measuring cup uh, if we look at this cup per se it has a patented design of uh, reading from the top so in a top down manner you can read the meniscus uh, and the meniscus levels which otherwise would mean a conventional measuring cylinder where uh, the concerned um, user has to go down to the level of the meniscus to see exactly where the position of the meniscus is with respect to a vertically aligned scale so uh, the very fact of uh, angling that particular scale or, or putting the scale in a certain angle helps you to do the exact same thing without bending and going to the level of the meniscus and it is just it can be done top down okay uh, the cup has several other features like a very very good grip which is provided by this well designed handle uh, of course the scale can uh, also measure uh, uh, ounce and millimeter markings so there are two different grades uh, in terms of different units of course um, it also needs it also eliminates the need to fill check and adjust because everything that you are able to visualize uh, from the top is what uh, actually turns out to be the level of the fluid which is inside so again uh, customer psyche mapped into the ordinary measuring cylinder another example could be this very famous target prescription pill bottle which um, has several different advantages over a conventional bottle uh, it has the name of the doctor mentioned or the contact id of the doctor mentioned there is a uh, colored uh, portion of the bottle which indicates uh, who is the concerned person in the family who will have this medication so you can color code different patients okay the patient info also is mentioned in the particular bo bottle and what is the drug exactly and what is the dosage you know uh, is also mentioned there are many instances where customers who are regular users of different pills uh, forget about uh, if, if they are consuming multiple pills forget about their exact dosage in a particular pill and they have to refer back to the prescription again and again so all this goes into the bottle itself which makes it much more usable so again uh, how much of that psyche can you really put into your product uh, to make you number one in the market is um, all about how uh, product development or design activities can be carried out and so if i think about this um, if i looked into some of these different products one important aspect is that how do you initiate them uh, from a very very fundamental design uh, in terms of a sketch which would attract attention okay and uh, when we talk about such sketches we deal with uh, two different aspects of such sketches which are very uh, well known and uh, they are shapes and forms okay and so today in this particular lecture i would like to just delve a little bit into this shapes and forms concept and probably in the next lecture we will talk about how to make such shapes and forms into different uh, 2d and 3d shapes uh, particularly uh, aligned with uh, the power of um, a computational tool so obviously a shape is a closed two dimensional object okay it can be shown by an edge or a line um, two dimensions object for example could have 
either height or width or it could have a length or length and width or uh, it could also have length and height. Okay. And so, these are some different geometric shapes, um, they can be a square, pentagon, octagon, triangle, heptagon, um, hexagon, circle, rectangle based on how many sides and what are the relative dimensions of sides with respect to each other uh, that can be. So, the two dimensional shapes can uh, be created or analyzed using uh, fundamental mathematical equations. Okay. And so, one of the aspects of um, how to create these shapes in space would be about laying them out in a uh, x, y, z coordinate and trying to map them. Uh, and then when we change positions or rotate them or translate them or let us say uh, do various manipulations to them, how the coordinates would suitably change. So, one of the principal ways of looking at these forms and shapes when we uh, talk about computer systems. Uh, in fact, today product design uh, is inseparable uh, from uh, the tools of uh, the current century, the high, high speed computational tools of the current century. And so, therefore, product design has to be thought in line with computer assisted or computer aided product design. But what goes into the back end of such tools is typically something that um, one has to uh, you know do a detailed study of. And so, uh, uh, what we are going to come next is into how to uh, develop such shapes using different equations and trying to solve those uh, to see how the shapes do orient. And so, the front end as well as back end will be in parallel uh, continued okay, for this particular study. Uh, there are also different shapes which are mostly derived from living matters. They are not so regular as you saw in the last uh, step and they are typically uh, also known as organic shapes where you can for instance look at a particular leaf in two dimension or these different uh, forms of sketches you know which have come up from different you know naturally influenced objects um, particularly living matter. And so, a lot of these aspects can be trapped within such organic shapes. Uh, the other important os aspect is the form, which is about a, uh, you know a three dimensional object and how to represent this on a picture plane. Okay. So, typically uh, this would have height, it would have width and uh, also depth. So, uh, this for example, you know is a representation in a 2D, but actually it looks like a 3D shape. So, this is what uh, is meant by how to represent a, a form, a 3D in a 2D plane. Uh, forms may be for the real or implied forms. Uh, and there are different ways and means of representing regular forms, which are in terms of regular architectures like cone, sphere, cylinder, pyramid, cube, triangular prism, rectangular prism, so on and so forth. A variety of these forms can be seen here. Seen here. So when we talk about uh, representing irregular forms, just as we did in the case of organic shapes, uh, and also when we represent, you know, a shape to be converted into a form, we could do that by a variety of methods. Uh, particularly, you could have a detailed contour line drawing uh, as illustrated here. You could also <laughs> talk about adding value through shading. Uh, this is another example of how shading can help in representing or visualizing a 3D uh, form out of in a particular 2D plane. Okay. Uh, you could also talk about the <laughs> perspective, which is the art of representing uh, again three dimensional objects on a two dimensional surface. So, as to give the right impression of their height, width, depth. This for example, is a perspective drawing of a water bottle or uh, again you know uh, if I looked at a regular shape a square could have a perspective drawing which is in terms of a uh, sort of a cuboid. Uh, so, this is how uh, different shapes can be 2D shapes can be turned into uh, different forms. So, uh, with this I would like to sort of end today's lecture by giving you an idea of how important it is to express uh, different products in terms of uh, their aesthetic design or their layouts. And uh, the next step that we will emerge in probably the next lecture is how to take some of these shapes and forms in the real CAD or the computer assisted designing and trying to plot them on a 2D screen using uh, coordinate transformations. So, till then thank you very much uh, for listening to me. Thank you.